Race relations is not an easy topic in Boston, but it's one getting much more attention. In part because of glaring disparities in income and opportunity, and because so many want to be a part of the solution. In tonight's Boston Next, WBZ's Lisa Hughes takes a look at race relations in Boston, the reality, the pain, and the progress. New at five, targeted by hate. Racist graffiti found around the school in the past month. And it's because of the late owner's legacy when it comes to race. It's a reputation Boston can't seem to shake no matter how much the population changes. When WBZ went on the air 70 years ago, Boston was 94% white. And the Census Bureau actually included Latinos in that number. The city was 5% black. And other ethnic groups made up 0.3%. Fast forward to 1984, a more diverse city and a WBZ special, Boston's Changing Face. Today, there's a new look to the ethnic mix of Boston. Blacks, Latinos, and Asians are growing in population and gaining in influence. Back then, the city was recovering from the scars of the busing conflict of the mid-70s and the riots that broke out over the court-ordered desegregation of Boston schools. Let us go to our neighborhoods where our kids are safe. Throwing eggs at the window and try to hit people with them. If you're not going to disperse, you're going to be arrested. Liz Walker felt the residual tension when she arrived in Boston in 1980. Neighborhoods that we couldn't go in as reporters, uh, that they told us they didn't want us to go to Charlestown. We couldn't go to South Boston because there was a lot of, uh, you know, just tension, lots of problems, lots of confrontation. Now the city is 47% white, 22% black, 17% Latino, and 9% Asian, with other groups making up the rest. Boston public schools are among the nation's most diverse. And yet, I just want to relax, turn my brain off, and watch the blackest city in America beat the most racist city I've ever been to. It's the only spotlight series I think that ever began with a quip on Saturday Night Live. What the Boston Globe's seven part series on race revealed surprised even the contributing journalists, including columnist Adrian Walker. Everything was a bit worse than I thought it would be. The economic data was worse than I thought it would be. Everything from unemployment, twice as high for blacks and Latinos, to housing discrimination and a lack of of political representation. We're not quite living up to um, how we actually not only see ourselves but would like to be. NAACP President Tanisha Sullivan. We still have deep, deep, deep and, and persistent racial achievement and opportunity gap. And in one respect, a financial chasm. The median net worth of a black Boston family is $8. For a white family, it's more than 247,000. It was so jarring to the point that we had to write a second story explaining that the first story wasn't a mistake. And I think everybody was surprised by that. But perhaps also surprising was the response to the series. If race was the topic no one wanted to discuss, people are talking now. Actually meeting up to brainstorm ways to be more inclusive and create opportunities across the board for people of color. We just hear about so many organizations using the series as a sort of a launching pad for discussion. That is obviously something we love hearing. There's something very different about what's happening this time. We don't want to just talk about race. We want to do something, right? And, and we want to figure out a new way to tackle this old foe. And with that openness comes optimism. I think um, we are going toward the positive way. People. Uh, more have a bit more understanding than they did. I think Boston has grown up. I think there's more diversity in Boston now. I think Boston has exhaled in many ways. Well, I will tell you, when I saw that $8 median net worth figure, I thought it was a typo. It's just shocking. It was shocking. not a typo. It's, it's remarkable. So what has changed? Well, I think what's changing now, and we heard this from almost everyone we talked to, is that the progress that's being made, the efforts to be more inclusive, they don't start with government. They start with people mm. who say, all right, what can we do as business owners, as leaders? What can we do? How can we begin to promote opportunities? Mm. And Tanisha Sullivan from the NAACP said, that's where you're going to make the difference. Mm. There are three key components, people say, to inclusion and greater opportunities. We're going to have the details on that tonight at 11 o'clock, and you'll see some of the progress that is taking place in very specific ways. Great piece, and so interesting to hear Liz Walker's perspective mm. from all the decades and how it's in her changed. Experience. Yeah. Thanks, Lisa. And to see more of our Boston Next series, go to our website, cbsboston.com, and click on Boston Next.